would be so kind as to do that. Um, well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hello. Uh, We're here in Copyright Literacy we Towers, are aren't we? We are here, and this morning we are sporting the Copyright and Online Learning Special Interest Group T-shirts. I got mine for Christmas. You got you your, you I got mine for Christmas as well. Did you? What am I talking about? <laughs> uh, yes, uh, it was... I bet people would like to know where they could buy them from. Uh, I'm sure that they would, yes. Is uh, there a website? I think there is a website. I think. Do I have the link to it at my hand? Am I able to put it in the chat? No, of course I'm not, because I <laughs> mucked around trying to get the audio to work. So if you could so kindly share, or in fact, it may be that one of our lovely um, participants today has the link and can do it for us. Absolutely. Um, I'm not sure if Greg is there. I think Greg Walters, first person to sport one of these T-shirts available from the Association for Learning Technology store. Um, so, yeah. Here we, we go. We, we, we've got it, and the slides are coming up. Have you pressed record? Yes, we we're recording. We're recording, we're recording, of course. So this we're recording. smooth, seamless start has been captured for posterity. <laughs> so, we should just say, for those that you don't know who we are, I'm Chris Morrison. And I'm Jane Secker, and uh, we co-chair the Alt Copyright and Online Learning Special Interest Group, yes. among other things. But this is this is actually webinar number 46, isn't it? For those who don't know their Roman numerals. 46, yeah, XLVI, yes. for those that do. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, hang on, I'm going to turn that off again. Right, that's fine. It's okay. <laughs> Everything is fine. Um, <laughs> We're just, just having a few crisis issues here. <laughs> it's okay. I thought it was uncertainty, not crisis. We've gone back into crisis. Have we done time. that? <laughs> yes. Oh dear. Right, okay, we'll need to change that for next time. Right. Let's get on because we do actually have a really, really good program today. And we, we have want to an amazing program. We have, rather as, than us just mucking around. As just exactly. Um, we have uh, copyright news copyright coming news. up, as ever. Everyone's favourite. And confessions. Little jingle. And, and confessions of not one, but two learning technologists spilling the beans about what ed techs really think about copyright. Mm -hmm. And of course, the and maybe some other things. Do you think they'll confess about other things? We don't know. Can we grill them about anything? Let's see. Let's <laughs> see where we go. Obviously, a chance for everybody to ask questions and uh, get involved in a, a great conversation at the end. Um, and then we'll have what's coming up next afterwards. Absolutely. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Yes, indeed. So. Um, Since what, we last met. So anything been happening? <laughs> uh, that's me last week. That is. That's me. So, and you seem to be posing with a cake a with cake candles with on candles. it. A cake with candles, yes. Yes, as is the tradition mm. when it is the anniversary of one's birth. Can you believe she's 24 years old? It's incredible. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Might be a little bit older than that, okay. but it's not yet a significant birthday. Okay. So, but yes, it has been my birthday. And um, in addition to getting this wonderful T-shirt, yes, which I got actually for Christmas, not okay. for my birthday, right? Yeah, I got a really nice present, didn't I? Okay. Yeah. You 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 advance the slides, um, and I'm going to close down this thing so I can play the jingle when the time comes. <laughs> you got so somebody very um, very kind, very kind has brought you who knows of my musical talent. Yes, <laughs> and all that potential there is just untapped. Yes. So the, the Catio keyboard, which dates from 1985, um, which um, has been dug out of my um, loft stroke basement um, and is, is now in full working order. Um, Chris has got it there. It's got some amazing tunes. We haven't it? rehearsed this, have we? I mean, I wasn't going to do it, but I mean. Now you've got it going. Don't you want to put a beat on? Oh, I think you need to put one of the beats on. No, 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 no. Let's leave it to later. Right. Okay. Okay. We'll do it at the end. Okay. We'll do it at the end. Anyway, I. I I'm known for my musicality. Yeah. And in addition to also now starting to learn to play the ukulele properly, I'm going to be playing the keyboard yeah. uh, at some point. Let's <laughs> hope so that goes better than it did at our Christmas webinar. So, yes. Anyway, had a lovely birthday. Yeah. So, let's continue. Let's continue. Uh, a reminder that the full webinar and archive is available on the copyrightliteracy.org site. It's also available on the Alt YouTube channel. It is, which yes. Which we haven't got the link to there, uh, but um, we've now uploaded the videos. Um, well, we're not doing it. The wonderful Christina at Alt is um, sorting that out for us once we have the recordings up there. Yeah. Um, I'll just put I'll put the link into our web page, and actually the the web page has also got on it a link to the Alt YouTube channel. Yeah, so if anyone's looking for that, um, we've got that available. 
Um, so yeah, we'll put the recording of this one up later today and um, and we'll put the slides up as well um, if you're looking for anything. And if you're ever looking for the link to get into the webinar, I'm sure you know that's where it is, um, unless it's a closed session. Um, Copyright news, 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 so the first thing uh, we've got on here is that the Skirl Copyright and Legal Group have a conference coming up next week, which is an absolutely amazing lineup. I mean, it's, it's another blockbuster, really. You've got um, Ben White talking about text and data mining, Emily Hudson talking about controlled digital lending. Um, we've got uh, Bridget Vizina from Creative Commons talking about uh, open culture and glam, and then Chris Banks talking about the, um, uh, well, what is it? I can't, the writing's so small. <laughs> I think it's, it's, it's the, about the UK Development scholarship. of institutional open access policies. Yes, uh, it's, it is, and devices. the work that, 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 um, that she's been leading for some time on uh, a UK scholarly communications license based on the Harvard model. So this is not to be missed. Absolutely um, not, no. Um, um, if you haven't booked, then um, I'm assuming that there is still tickets available on Eventbrite. Um, I'll put the link in mm. in a moment. I'm just yeah. I'm just getting there. I'm getting there, and I'll I'll do that. If you carry on with okay. our next news item. Next news item is uh, another event, um, the eBooks Crisis in Ireland. Um, so that is again we've had uh, lots of discussions here about the eBooks Crisis, but this is um, an Irish Library event where um, Johanna Anderson is talking, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. the, the kind of key person in that campaign, but also with other. Um, academic librarians um, over the other side of the Irish Sea from where we are currently. Uh, the next thing is a very exciting, I mean this is super exciting, we've been talking about Fair Dealing Week for some time um, and we are super excited to announce this launch event which is being hosted by the Institute of Advanced Legal Studies. Jane and I will be um, chairing the event, we will be joined by friend of the webinar, Kyle K. Courtney from Harvard University, yep. the inventor uh, of what fair, they call in the US Fair Use fair Week, use week that they? they now call yeah. Fair Use Fair Dealing Week. Um, we'll be doing a bit on just explaining to people what fair dealing is. So we think it's going to be quite a, a large, a broad and diverse audience. And then we have Dr. Emily Hudson again, but also uh, presenting alongside Professor Tanya Applin. Uh, my supervisor when I studied at King's College London and they've been working together on a, a project looking at quotation norms so that is just going to be brilliant. It is. Um, I, I was currently failing to get any of these links into the chat to book these events but um, uh, we'll I tell work. you what I will go back to the I'll be the link monkey and you, can be, the, you, can, be, you can be the slide progressor. Thank you. Uh, so we're switching roles midstream. So, Thank okay, you. over to you for the next event. Okay, so next event is um, actually um, a, a, another Skirl event that is uh, tied in with Fair Dealing Week. There is going to be a host of events happening and we're going to put a mm. blog post up um, hopefully next week. Um, just listing um, some of the other events that are going on. Um, but um, Greg Walters is ever hot off the mark with the Skill uh, Copyright and Legal Matters Committee. They've already um, put together um, a, a, an event um, and they've got it advertised and up on their um, events page at the moment. Um, so that one's going to be on Thursday, the 24th of February in the morning. Um, and uh, it's it's actually going to be really great. It's got they've got Debbie McDonald talking about. Um, the the kind of experiences at the British Council. Um, yeah, so Debbie, they, another yeah. friend of the webinar, uh, a member of our gang, who has got a really fantastic international perspective on all of these things. Clearly, uh, you know, she looks at UK law, but it's to deal with people all across the world, um, and how do how does you kind of square that circle, really? So, another. Thank you. Really Put in the links in the chat as well. That is That's okay. Looking good. I. I'm happy to do so. Okay, next up, um, we have um, a survey um, that we we picked up. I think I got this from one of the open education lists. Um, Creative Commons are very interested 
um, in uh, open glam. So if you're a gallery, library, museum or um, archive, um, they're really interested in doing this piece of work um, about um, what your needs are in this area. Um, and they're sort of basically looking um, to use it to inform some development work, I think, with Creative Commons tools. Um, so about um, putting work into the public domain and making that clearer. Um, so it's a lot about, you know, how we share cultural heritage um, and the use of, of Creative Commons licenses. So if you do any work in that area, if, if you're um, in a library and you do, um, I, I would definitely urge you to have a look at that survey um and and consider fill, filling that in um to help inform the great work creative commons do um, and then finally um we also picked up a paper um i think this was also sent to list copy seek so those mm. of you on um list copy seek um may well have already seen this you might have read it yet mm. um i i have not read um the paper yet i've just had a quick scan through the abstract checking for your name basically lovely <laughs> yeah yeah, that is what I did. Yeah. Yeah. See how much, how many times I was cited in it. Absolutely. So, um, not once. It's, not once. no, there is. There's a, thank you. Well, there's an acknowledgement. That's not the same as a citation. No, it's it? not. Yeah. It doesn't, anyway. uh, no. Let's not. Let's but it looks that. at lecture recording policies, not just in the UK, but it looks at Ireland and it looks at uh, Italy mm. and uh, France, I think, as well. Yeah. Um, and compares um universities uh sort of policies but it does build on some earlier work that chris and i did that sadly isn't cited <laughs> but we, we, we'll let we, that one we, go we, we never we'll got we never got go. that published in a in an actual uh we got it in the times journal. higher we got an article in the times higher anyway yeah, let's we, let's i think we probably need to move on because <laughs> otherwise we're just wasting our time okay uh, so Without further ado, Without the main ado. event is confessions time, isn't yes. it? Feels like that needs a jingle. Uh, maybe we can dub it in afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, are, are you introducing our speakers? No, I, I think you are. You, okay. You okay. So um, we have two fantastic speakers. Um, I, I'm hoping that they're prepared to talk in the order they're listed on the slide. So I'm thinking we're going to be going over to Evan first, if we can. Um, Evan Dickerson. Um, who is at Guildhall School of Music and Drama, did not have his arm twisted at all, I think, to want to come forward and, and talk about uh, learning technologists' experience of copyright. Um, Evan, I've got your slides, um, so I can get those up for you. Um, you're going to do it? OK. Um, but we're really looking forward to, um, you know, hearing a bit about the experience you've had at um, other institutions as well. Not, I know... Guildhall School of Music and Drama, obviously, a um, really interesting institution where I'm sure copyright can come up in lots of ways. But you're going to be talking, I think, drawing on experience that you've got from working as a learning technologist for, you know, in, in uh, other institutions too. So can you hear us, Evan? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Can you all okay. hear me okay? I think so, yeah. Yes. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So, take it away. Thanks very much. Fantastic. Well, thank you for... Um, having me along this morning to uh, you know to kind of spill the beans from a learning technology perspective really um, as I've seen it and experienced it I've been in the learning technology field for um, over 20 years now seems a lot longer whether that's good or not I don't know um, but yeah I thought I'd start with a disclaimer uh, actually the ex examples I'm going to discuss later on in this aren't actually from um, my current employer. Um, I have been here for about six months now, but I, I've been through all of our, um, you know, Moodle sites, etc. And uh, I haven't found any, to be honest with you, to be absolutely honest. Um, although in the last couple of weeks, I have had, you know, a flurry of um, inquiries relating to copyright in various ways. So I'm looking to uh, you know, create some guidance for staff and consult, you know, for staff to consult when they're creating or modifying their online course presences. Um, I was chairing a meeting as well last week, um, which I recorded, and I immediately went back to the recording to, to write down that quote quite uh, specifically around uh, what one colleague shared their own practice and, uh, you know, reflect on what, you know, some some of our uh, academics 
maybe are doing as professional musicians, but also reflecting on my own thoughts around copyright and my own knowledge and the need to go back, I think. And before I write that guidance, I said I'm going to do actually, um, you know, check my own knowledge and check what I think I'm going to put in there, um, but also refer as well to other uh, sources that are out there. Um, another excellent work that you both have been doing uh chris and jane over the over the past few years and um you know be referring to that no doubt but it's quite interesting i think that you know i i am seeing and hearing colleagues that are saying uh yeah maybe doing one thing as a as a practicing professional but actually not wanting to to do the same thing or pass those that same approach on to uh that their students which is an interesting thing. Um, so thinking about copyright um, breaches or potential breaches um, or debatable issues and things, you know, where have, what, where have I encountered these in the past? Um, and I think, that, you know, the list I, I, I've got here is a small one, but it's, it's um, indicative of some of the most common areas I found. Um, in the VLE, obviously, learning management system, uh, lecture capture, blogs, social media, um, and that interesting one that maybe a lot of people don't want to admit to sometimes is whistleblowing colleagues. And I've encountered a couple of examples of those over, over the years, um, one of which I'll, I'll share in a minute. But um, yeah, I think one of the interesting things from where I sit as a learning technologist you know, currently being the only one at the school, but I've, I've managed teams in the past, is questions around copyright can come at you from a whole range of different places um, and different uh, ways of getting to you, whether it's in, you know, training sessions or staff development sessions, um, raised in emails to you, um, you know, whether people just ping you up on Teams or whatever it happens to be and go, you know, I want to put this, um, a set of resources online uh you know and you look at it and you think oh really um you know there can be a whole range of ways in which things uh get to you and i i've been trying trying to remember actually but i i do recall a number of years ago um i was on the bus on the way home and, and somebody just kind of tapped me on the shoulder and said oh well i see you um yeah, can I just ask you about, uh, you know, getting a resource online and um, what the implications might be? And I was thinking, okay, there's a time and a place for this kind of, you know, query. Um, but, uh, you know, having to think about it, look at it and, and get back to people afterwards. Um, so, yeah, it's, you know, these things literally can come at you from any any place, any, any time, anywhere, I guess. Um, so it's things approaching you before the fact um, and you know picking up on issues as they occur um, and you know maybe having to take retrospective action as well if, if things have happened that maybe shouldn't have happened as well so my next slide then some questions and conversations um, about copyright um, these are quotes as far as I have them written down from various places over the years. Um, you know, the, the, the misconceptions I think are still out there, aren't they? We can use anything from anywhere, right? Um, if it's a result on a Google search and it's out there already, you know, who will even know or care? Um, I must have heard that in many ways and, and variations over the years. Um, people just asking, you know, are there copyright restrictions? They don't seem to seem to be aware that there might be. Um, then the third one there I'll, I'll freely use anything in order to cert in order to teach that's legit um you know not even questioning the fact that might not be um, but i did find people been have been downloading images and, and copying text from my website and other online publications without my knowledge or permission so when asked how did that make them feel it's like oh well, you know i was very uh you know peed off about that um and you know the conversation went on from there really um and then the, the kind of hinting at the whistleblowing thing that i've i've had a couple of times you know i shouldn't tell you but look at what x has done you know report the individual uh, well why don't you oh, I, uh, and then there's the immediate rollback which 
uh, you sense in terms of you know when once you put the uh, in onus on somebody else they go oh is it really my place uh, how do you do that anyway um, look maybe it's not that serious you know should we really take it that seriously did they intentionally do it yeah um, and all of these things are serious things I think to to take note of because it, it does show that it is an issue out there um, and it's probably just as um, prevalent now as it was you know uh, 10 15 years ago when I really started hearing a lot of this and, and kind of taking it on and, and looking at it seriously so all of those kind of comments have led me in the past and I'll probably be offering a similar kind of um, training at my current institution in the future uh, to develop and offer in-house training within various universities that I've been um, employed you know looking at face-to-face -face sessions or virtual sessions now that would be probably with academics and researchers giving a kind of overview of copyright law um, exceptions to copyright for lecture teaching um, looking at and debating and um, you know what things like illustration uh, for instruction might need, mean or uh, fair use might mean uh, looking at issues around copyright and lecture recording um, what could happen if uh, copyright is infringed in terms of the licenses that, you know that are relevant to the institution where we've got subscriptions to to things um, what's out there overviews of creative commons um, you know google advanced searching etc um, and in the past i've tried to include uh, some activity and discussion using examples of breaches or potential breaches that i've found um, as a means of kind of you know getting people to think about it and not actually to passively just kind of walk them through what the copyright law might say but actually what it might mean in practice you know for them um, to reflect on their own practice and think you know what were they planning to do um, you know what might be the, the steps there that they might need to rethink um, and I should say I, I've always taken the stance that no academics were named and shamed but of course colleagues couldn't resist guessing who they were um, always seems to be a kind of lovely um, game they want to play but uh, you know anim anonymity rules and I'm, I'm not going to reveal anything in terms of uh, you know, institutions or, or places or, or people in the examples I'll discuss so um, the quote there at the top stop being difficult and just put it on the VLE for me you know it's I must have had that many times over the years from various academics in various ways for various reasons um, but you know maybe as a learning technologist we we do need to kind of have a, a weather eye on in terms of what's representing um, you know the institution online um, particularly if you know you're the person with responsibility for that that uh, platform and that technology and the contents of it um, so university a um a request to digitize an entire book uh, a core reference material for a module and put the scanned copy on the vle um tutor refused to accept that this breached copyright um, they saw student access to material as as the primary concern as the primary reason um scanned copy him, you know, the lecturer ended up scanning a copy himself and sought colleagues from help you know to get it online uh, and library uh, colleagues at the time were involved with me in, t in terms of taking it down and then kind of you know uh, really kind of going back to them and going you know, this just is not acceptable practice um, you know and saying you know, what they could do um, and you know working with them on, on that um, University B electronic copy of um, academic study resource found on the VLE 
uh, purchased under an individual use license but and shared incorrectly um, pu publisher found out and sent a lawyer's letter requesting removal uh, that was an instance and it was was removed within the time because that, there's clearly no reason why it should have been uh, shared in the way it was um, the one that gets me uh, quite often is university C example of screenshots of citation styles in academic study sessions being included in lecture slides um, but actually where those uh, printed sources were taken from wasn't actually referenced so um, yeah people not doing what they should not practicing what they should be practicing when actually you know um, teaching students um, and of course I think you know since lecture capture systems have come in more widely and um, they're much more widespread than they used to be uh, you know it is a way of capturing and and um, maybe learning technologists now see a lot more of the, of the kind of under the radar practice if we um, you know have to uh, you know kind of um, edit the recordings or, or look through things and um, you know before we put them up on the VLE sometimes there's a there's a you know 24 hour lag in in some institutions I know in terms of lecture recordings being captured maybe edited slightly um, you know um, or tidied up before they're going on the VLE but I think there is a, a wide variety of um, practice that's quite often captured there so photos of patient you know medical patient notes being used um, without being anonymized or redacted in any way uh, certainly breaches patient uh, confidentiality there's something there that I think you know we need to be aware of uh, photos being taken of you know just literally academics taking um, photos of a TV screen um, identifying the broadcaster where that uh, happens um, you know that's not good is it that really is not good um, and that you know happened quite a bit um, yeah and also just kind of other other things in terms of copyright sources you know plainly used for illustration rather than um, active you know teaching around a specific point um, so the the family guy incident I remember was um, you know a lecture on you know knee injuries and one of the characters in the in the cartoon there um, being captured as a still clutching his knee when he'd fallen over on a pavement pavement or whatever it might be so clearly uh, not good not not cited um, and not acknowledged in any way uh, university why I think is uh, an interesting one um, you know high resolution downloads of artworks from museums or galleries used uh, where they could have linked to the source uh, no citation of sources um, you know uh, that's quite quite a difficult thing potentially um, you've you've potentially got issues there with um, the museum or the gallery and you know and even the artist uh, themselves potentially I think um, and it's quite interesting to to reflect on I think on the last example there that it's not just in terms of teaching but it's also potentially in terms of um, assessment uh, practice and um, you know the kind of guidance that's given um, but also how the, how it is or isn't picked up on uh, within examples of feedback to students um, so I think you know all the way through the um, student learning and assessment uh, journey you know there are opportunities to bring up um, and to surface conversations around um, copyright and its place within uh, you know the whole uh, cycle of what we do um, and I think it's a question of us as learning technologists being in a position maybe um, particularly in small uh, specialist institutions to um, 
be willing and, and open and available to have those conversations, even though they might be quite difficult at times um, with colleagues um, to make sure that this is something that is not just a one hit, but I think it's something that we've got to continually do. It's, you know, it's an ongoing piece of work, uh, you know, particularly where we get um, you know, new staff coming in who maybe hadn't lectured before or hadn't taught for quite some time. Um, you know, it's one of those things that needs to be uh, surfaced and needs to be made uh, part of the, the daily conversation of, of what it means to be, uh, you know, an ac academic in today's environment. Um, so, yeah, that's what I had to say, just to give a few examples there. And I just wondered if, um, you know, there's any comments or questions or observations that you've got at this point. Thank you, Evan. That's fantastic. Uh, really good insight there. Some really excellent examples. I know we've had some comments there. I think what we what we would like to do is um, if we can have sort of questions for all speakers at the end, unless there are anything we look at in the chat coming through as a sort of burning immediate thing, I think what we would do is is how we'll hand over to Richard and then we'll we'll kind of pose questions to both of you um, to see how we can you know reflect on your on your different perspectives but thank you that was that was brilliant yeah thanks very much excellent yeah so, so we're now going to get uh, Richard um, Richard's slides up there we go um, so I know we've been saying um, confessions of a learning technologist and in fact there are two learning technologists. Strictly speaking, Richard, you are actually a lecturer in higher education practice. Um, and whilst technically, <laughs> yeah, and whilst heavily involved in learning technology in the same way that Jane is. And what did you say the difference was? The educational developer in, in technology just kind of comes in and comes up with great ideas and then leaves it to the learning technologist to actually do all the hard work. <laughs> Uh, sounds sounds yeah. a bit great, right, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, no, you didn't say that. Sorry. I, I, just forget what I just said. But, um, uh, we can talk about that, Richard. Yeah, so Richard is, yes. is a lecturer in, in HE Practice, Centre for Higher Education Research uh, Practice at Ulster University, um, teaches on the first steps to teaching and Masters of Education. So active learning is your, your thing. And I think what you're going to be taking us through some things um, using digital storytelling. So over to you, Richard. Yeah, thanks very much. Thanks, thanks, Chris and Jane. And, and thanks, Evan. It's, it's funny, there's a lot of overlap between what you were saying and what I'm going to cover, um, which is good in some ways and bad in others. Um, but yes, so th this image, um, this is a, a, a slide from a Ray Harryhausen film, um, Jason and the Argonauts. And for me, this is the best way that I can illustrate how I feel when it comes to copyright and digital storytelling. Every time I cut off a head, there's another one, um, and the challenges that come. So I'll start. I'll start going through um, my slides. Um, so you might wonder um, at this point who I am. I'm not in this photograph. Okay, so don't try to find me. Um, I'm a lecturer in higher education practice, as um, Chris and Jane said, um, but. And not just that, I come from a learning technology background. I worked on a role probably very similar to Jane's um, for 10 years. Um, and I was an e-learning developer as well. Um, and I created medical illustrations, animations, videos, interactive learning objects. Um, I studied art and design at, at art college, um, went on to do a degree in visual communication and, went and worked in design agencies throughout Belfast um, as a graphic designer and, and web designer. Um, that's what I was before I got into the education side of things. Um, but I think the context of who I am um, kind of helps with, with the whole copyright issue. I, if I go back probably about 10 years ago, um, I used to create illustrations, as I said, for, for online master's courses. And there was one academic came to me one day and handed me a book and says, I want you to redraw the 60 illustrations in that so I can use it in my course. I just said no to him. <laughs> I can't do that. That's that's breaking um, copyright laws. Intellectual property belongs to somebody else. So this escalated up, and then, uh, as you can imagine, it was sorted. Um, he wasn't allowed to do it, and I did different things. But um, I think that just ties into some of the things Evan was saying. So I'll I'll just leave that there, and I'll go on to who my students are. Um, most of my students would be staff, whether that's academic staff or professional support staff. But I also teach um, 
at undergraduate level and postgrad level uh, in hospitality management and communications and marketing and I do digital storytelling with them and Evan mentioned about the assessment side of things. I've I've brought digital storytelling into the assessments, and so that's some of the copyright issues come out through that. And I'll get to that later. Um, but other aspects um, which are probably challenging um, is the staff aspect. So we've got some, depending on, on where I'm teaching, some some staff would be more experienced, been there for a while, some are new. So the whole the whole copyright side of things when it comes to digital storytelling um, can get to be complex. So when I talk about digital storytelling, I suppose it means a lot of different things to different people. Um, but in my context, um, I think it was about seven or eight years ago, I was at a JISC event and a colleague at JISC, Chris Thompson, I don't know if you know Chris Thompson, um, was doing a session and sharing his practice around digital storytelling. And I thought, wow, with my background and stuff, um, I could really bring that back to Ulster and enhance staff through staff development opportunities. Um, so I did, started doing workshops, run workshops, um, around storyboarding, scripting, um, video production, audio recording, and sourcing images. And Creative Commons is is the the, the, the method that I, I encourage staff to use um, rather than um, just grabbing things off the web, use Creative Commons license um, to bring that through. And really, this is where I started fighting the Hydra. Um, and I'll get to the issues that come up constantly whenever, whenever I do this, um, and it's some of the ones that, that, that Evan, Evan rose earlier. Um, but I think as I started bringing that away from the, the staff development workshop opportunities and as my role developed and I brought it in as assessment in my modules, getting staff to get digital stories and students as well. Um, that's when I really had to make it sink in hard with them um, for, for, for two reasons. Um, obviously, if they're going to use digital storytelling with their students, um, the staff and that is, they, they need to make sure that they're doing things properly, um, setting things properly and uh, referencing things properly. But when I'm working with students who are undergrads, when they go out to work, particularly the hospitality management students, they go out to work in the industry, um, they have to be able to do things appropriately so they don't end up getting into hot water um, around that. So my confession, um, but before I get to my confession, isn't that a wonderful image? I don't know where this is but I would love to go and see this. This is just absolutely fantastic. Um, so my confession is probably hiding in plain sight and you've probably identified this at this point. I am not a copyright expert at all. I don't try to be, I don't pretend to be. Um, and that's probably why I've, I've, I've kind of honed on to the Creative Commons license because that's a safe place for me. Um, this is the image you use. You can find them on the Creative Commons search. Use these images. Um, and that is probably down to my background as a graphic designer going because I couldn't use those sort of um, images and find images of and use it in my work. I had to make sure that it was my work. Um, otherwise, the companies I was working with, whether it was Coca-Cola um, at the time or Magners, whoever it was, BBC, they could end up getting sued if I didn't do things right. So I'm very cautious around it. And I'll, I'll welcome and open any kind of um, feedback or any pointers I can get um, going forward with this because we're really, really open to see if I can enhance my practice through this. But if I go on just to the library, and this, this, this isn't our library by any stretch of the imagination, I just, this image kind of fitted into what I was trying to, to get across here. Our library um, are a fantastic resource for helping to get um, academic resources put on the VLE following the CLA guidelines, all that sort of stuff. But when it comes to digital storytelling, um, if I go through, and one thing I didn't cover actually in what is digital story, the actual what it is, um, sorry, I skipped over that. It's a video. Digital story's video is about two and a half minutes long. It uses images with a voiceover, okay? There's an example, actually a post, don't go to it yet because I don't use it to go away. I'll post it in the chat. There's an example of one I did, one of the first ones I did um, a few years ago. You can see what it is. Don't click on it now. You can watch it later. Um, you've got two minutes to spare. Um, so digital story is all about images, voiceover, going through. Um, and each digital story will have 30 to 50 images in it. And this, since semester started this semester, the last semester actually, or semester one, um, is around 70 staff and students have, um, have followed and um, done my workshops, created assessments, which then multiply that up. Um, it's remained 
2,100 images to 3,500. So that asking the library to help sort that or find it and resource and different things is crazy and bonkers. Um, we also have a policy, copyright policy at Ulster, which is I'm sure similar to other institutions, um, which is there and it's there to follow, but it's possibly not as um, helpful as it could be when you're, we're trying to actually do things. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll go on. Right, so issues, the sticky issues, the things that come up. Fair use, or fair deal, as I think it was referred to earlier. Um, this scares the complete life out of me. <laughs> I, I'm honest, I just don't understand it. Um, I think it's fuzzy, I think it's woolly, and I, I'll, I'll, I'm open to be um, educated on this. <laughs> I just stay away from it. Um, because um, to me, there's a blurry line in, in higher education, depending on what you're doing, whether something is um, able to be used in certain ways. Cost of licensing images. So if there's one image, uh, I worked with a, an academic uh, in photography about 10 years ago, and he wanted a specific photograph used in a learning object I was building. So I sourced that, I got that. It was £500 um, to be used for, I think, for the year. Um, and then it had to be taken down. So the cost of it is quite high if you were going to go down and do that. So Creative Commons obviously helps, but obviously academics say, I want to use this image. I can only use this image because the photographer lecturer was only actually wanting to talk about that image. It was pretty pointless for a different image in Creative Commons. It just wouldn't fit in. Um, staff and students, and this isn't just students, it's staff and students. Um, and, and Evan said this, I found, I found it in Google, um, so I can use it. Um, or the videos on YouTube, um, I can use it. So some of the students work that I marked recently um, had video footage that they downloaded from YouTube um, and then cited it. So they did cite it, but they, they didn't have the right to use it. Um, so those sort of things, even though they were covered in the content, they were pointed about how you create commons um, and also music, they go and grab soundtracks um, from published artists and insert that as well. And again, that could be an issue for whenever they go to work in industry, but obviously it's an, a, an issue within the institution uh, of our academics um, are then using those kind of in their lectures. Acknowledging Creative Commons, some that don't acknowledge it, just use Creative Commons images, but then they don't understand that depending on what license it is, um, you have to acknowledge it in a certain way. Um, and even if, if it's if it's under a, um, a license that would be um, under the public domain, I still encourage them to reference it. And all the images I've used in here are under public domain I'm from Pixabay, and I reference them at the end. Um, for one, it's acknowledging where you got them from, but two, you, you know where you got them from, so if you want to use them again, you can get them or share them or whatever. They also don't really understand no derivatives. Um, so you can't change something, you can't put text over it, you can't uh, crop it in, you can't do different things, they just, they just don't get that. They think, I can just use it for whatever. Um, and share like essay, share like, they don't realize that if they produce something then they have to share it if it's under that license. So I think those those are the the, the, the main crux of, of the issues um, that I have currently. Um, and I put that in feedback when it, when it's in a marked assignment, I put that in. Um, it's in the, it's actually in the assessment criteria to use Creative Commons in an appropriate way. So they get certain, uh, they'll get, they don't get marked as highly if they don't follow it properly. Um, and hopefully that going forward will help um, address some of the issues. But as, as I said, um, I'm not an expert in a way and I am risk averse to some extent when it comes to copyright. So I'm more than happy um, to learn from all of you guys um, to do things better. Um, from my perspective. Do we have any questions at this point? I think I've probably gone about quicker than I thought I would, but anyway, um, and there's the image. Richard, thank you yes. so much. That was, that was brilliant. Yeah, um, fantastic. Yeah, really, really, really interesting and great. Um, yes, the, the, those, those images were fantastic. I think the, the first question, and I'll, obviously I'll let um, someone's yeah, share the essay, a terminology check, the share alike component of the Creative Commons license, which means if a derivative version is created, then it must be shared under the same or equivalent license. So that is what uh, Wikipedia used, the CC attribution share alike, CC BYSA, in order to ensure that people can't take content from Wikipedia and then put a proprietary license around it and stop it from being open um, and, and, and licensed on a similar basis. Um, 
my my question actually is is it, it for, for both evan and richard in looking at the different approaches that you took to your presentations today mm. uh both of which were, were were fantastic but i what i i know that one of the issues that you were both talking about was that decision when you are teaching of how much you of sort of rich media content you put in there or how much you want to strip it back to the simplicity thing of concepts and, and text um, and the extent to which you think personally yourselves or with the with the with the teaching uh, staff that you work with how much of that decision is driven by copyright concerns and, and i mean do you think that in, in some way that that copyright law actually stops people from taking more of a creative and perhaps even humorous and playful approach to the way in which they do their teaching? Personally, I don't. Um, I think it, I would always encourage people that it allows you to be more creative because you have to think about things differently. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think it stifles it. I think of it as the example I give um, from the, the, the photography example, that it would stifle that because if you want to talk about a specific photograph that says a, a specific thing that's linked to your, the learning outcomes of the module or the course indeed, you need that photograph. And if you don't have the budget to spend the 500 pound on one photograph um, for that year, mm -hmm. then that would stifle that. You can't, you can't just, you can't make that up. You can't, <laughs> it's just impossible. Okay, no, thanks. Um, Evan, did you have thoughts on that? Yeah. Just popping up um, Richard's uh, credit slide, because Philippa asked if we could put that up again. Okay. Philippa, we'll share these as well, um, the slides afterwards. So uh, they'll go up on the website. But just so you can see it again, there it is. Sorry, Evan. <laughs> no worries. Um, yeah, I I agree. Actually, I think I'd I'd always try and encourage people to um, take a more creative approach, um, and having that conversation with with academics and and it's it's all about having that good relationship with them. Really, I think in terms of making helping them to think around the the the, the barriers they hit, um, mm -hmm. you know. Um, understanding what that what that is and then go well yeah this is still what i want to achieve because this this fits in with you know my module or you know it's part of an overall learning arc that they're creating for their their students from to get from the beginning of the model, module to the end and the assessment and everything but um if something they see is um vital is is not technically or you know possible within uh, copyright legislation what else could they do how how could they um have um you know an alternative approach to but might take them on a slightly different journey to get to the end result but you know would mm -hmm. um would enable it to happen nonetheless i think yeah i think i think i think one of the things i'm just reflecting on i mean i i used to run a session when um, I was in my previous job with one of the learning technologists mm. on using images in teaching and we mm. kind of did a bit of a mix of um, using images and why images were good for learning and helping mm. with sort of you know retention and uh, keeping keep students engagement we did mm. a bit about the technicalities of it as well and then we did a little bit about copyright but I think a lot of that work sort of I, I, and that was then a really good opportunity to talk about creative commons but mm. a lot of that, those workshops i was doing was pre um the sort of changes to the law and so i didn't generally speak about fair dealing and and mm. when you could use images because they were really central to your teaching you know and and you know i'm just i was just looking at the comment that um that uh I think it's John has just put in the, the chat as well about using fair dealing more often and thinking about the questions that you um, ask yourself um, about whether there's a case for using it, whether mm. you have to use it, whether you're only using the sort of required amount and whether it affects the market. And I know photographers have quite strong feelings mm. about about that. Oh, I yeah. also popped into the, the, the chat, um, Richard, I don't know if you'd heard about this sort of issue around when sometimes it goes wrong when you're using Creative Commons images. We had a really good workshop over the summer um, about some of the, the what, what is kind of called copyright trolling that's been done where images are up on Flickr 
with CC licenses on, but have got a very specific type of license, a 2.0 license, that then means they have to be credited in a particular way. And we've had lots of universities who've had demands for license fees because they say these are not being credited in the right way. One of the journalism lecturers um, had this happen to some of his students when mm. we were doing blogging. Um, so it's kind of sometimes you're trying to do all the right things, aren't you? Mm. And 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 it's yeah, it's really it's really easy to get mixed up and confused um, and get it wrong. Yes. Um, I think we return to the, the, the right wrong yeah, thing, yeah. I think, later. There's a question from Katie here about, Evan, do you have any other examples of issues, uh, particularly with teachers and students using music without infringing copyright? We know music is can be a slightly tricky area. Yeah. Um, I've had conversations with people, uh, started to have conversations with a couple of people about it, but I haven't got actually any examples of you know where they where they've taken it further um yet i mean I've, I've only been here for a few months so i'm still finding my mm. way around the place but uh yeah it is something i think I'll, i will need to be aware of um and i think we'll clear as well on the uh, on the on the call as well um who's at trinity Laban, so maybe well, you might want to have a chat with her at some point she's probably yeah, that would seen be lots of those things over the years not that not that i'm saying you've been around for a long time claire Come as long as me <laughs> um, I, I think the thing I wanted to return to about um, right and wrong, and I think we've referred to the fact that when we're talking about fair dealing uh, and copyright exceptions, some of these things can be woolly. So in fact, it's not always clear whether mm. something is acceptable or isn't acceptable. Um, I know that uh, Philippa asked to see uh, Richard your 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 um, your statement and your slide. I actually think this is an area where we could work on as a community. I think I've said this for quite some time yeah. because actually, in it, the, there's uh, I think sometimes we take quite a cautious approach. I think it's important as well to ensure that what we do reflects UK law. I think some of the stuff that you found there, Richard, is is referring to to US law because the duration. Okay. I think work differently and I would actually say you said Richard you're you're a bit wary of fair dealing I would say fair dealing is something you use all the time and and when you're putting a, a content in there and also Evan you're referring to say the family guy uh, uh, picture in a in a, a slide mm. um, if that is illustrating a point if that is actually making a it, it, it helps add to the pedagogic aims of the teaching and it's properly referenced and credited I personally say, well, that's where illustration for instruction. Uh, I I'm saying personally, it's not just me. I think there's a, generally that's a feeling that that we've been talking about quite a lot and how we interpret um, that those particular uh, provisions in the law. And I think sometimes it helps to have it, um, those slightly woolly ideas scaffolded a bit by, mm. by coming up with things that we all feel are, are, are kind of accurate wording about how we communicate them. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that example was just, uh, you know, still used on, you know, the title slide of a lecture, so, you know, for the whole lecture. Um, mm. And it wasn't credited and it wasn't referenced, so. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I think that's where often the, the people do come unstuck. Mm. And I've mm. often, I, I mean, I like if you go on um, Unsplash and obviously they've got quite a lot of images still that are CC zero, but yeah. then they do, when, you, when you're downloading an image, say you want to credit, and it gives you such an easy way of doing it. Yeah. And I've, I've often thought that, you know, what do they, they call it, this kind of nudge technologies, things mm. that make it really mm. easy to do the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about right and wrong again. Oh, Sorry. yes, indeed. <laughs> but things that make it really easy to do something like attribution, because it is fiddly, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm sort of sometimes I go back through slides and I'm taking slides from here, there and everywhere. And I've got a quote and then I realise that my references at the end haven't actually I've quoted somebody and I put a citation on, but I haven't got the full reference in the slide at the end. And, you know, we're all quite busy, some of us. And, <laughs> and you know, it, it is when you're when you're teaching and you're putting materials together, you are often doing it really at the last minute. And so it's it's sort of often after the occasion that you you realize you know mm. or you're going to go to a conference or do something else with it mm. that, that that i think that's certainly when i found lecturers used to ask copyright questions mm. when late later after they've done things 
Um, yeah, and Diane's just mentioned, yeah, illustration for instruction, but it could be quotation as well. And that's perhaps one of the things that is confusing is that there's no one single um, provision in the law. In fact, there's a number of them that kind of cluster together um, that yeah. you can you can rely on more than one at the same I time. I think I think we might have time for one more question. Yeah. Do we have another? Do we have any more questions? Um, we're, we're I think, well, Richard, you've got a link there to your active learning. Oh, yes. Interest group. Yes. Shameless yeah. plug time. Shameless plug. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Go yeah. Ahead. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's always and, it, and maybe it's something we could think about um working together on an event i think i think some of the old communities you know there's an obvious overlap between us and the open education group but you know active learning and copyright well we, that's our thing well yeah yeah we, <laughs> we, we like that sort of thing so yeah let's, let's keep the conversation go going um I, I don't think i see any more questions people saying thank you very much any i mean if either evan richard did you have any last thoughts or comments um if not no worries Last thought from me, I guess, is that whole area of, you know, um, how educational development works with learning technology. Um, and again, that can be a bit of a blurred line, depending on the institution, the, si the size of the place, you know, the yeah. number of different different places you've got, you know, people in post. Um, certainly where I am at the minute, I'm, I'm having to be both of those functions. Um, hopefully not for much longer, but we'll, we'll see. Um, yeah, yeah. It's definitely. Coll collaboration it's, is the name of the game, isn't it? I think yeah. having us. A, a, absolutely. Know. And actually, Chris and I went to the CEDA conference, the Educational Development Conference, mm -hmm. to talk there about copyright, because I think we got a bit of a sense that learning technologists do know quite a bit about copyright. Educational developers, maybe less so. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. But if, if we can just thank you both very much. There's some really nice comments coming up mm -hmm. in the chat. Mm -hmm. uh, people have found it really helpful. Mm -hmm and um you know really appreciated you giving up the time today so thanks thanks very much big round of applause yes. for um richard and, and evan and stay in touch i think um we're just going to go over to our final slides um yeah. chris yeah so we've talked about fair dealing week so all the conversations we've been having we'll be having them again we will be looking some examples there are going to be a number of events we'll be previewing them the Friday before, so actually we haven't got the date in there. It's going to be oh, 18th, no, we haven't. Yeah. February the 18th. Put it in your diary, 11am. That's, that's our next time. webinar, and um, it will focus a bit on what's yes. coming up in Fair Dealing so Week. So we've got the launch event, we've got the scale event, we've got some other ones. There will be an event at the University of Kent um, online, these all are, uh, but about creative reuse, and will involve some things about how we teach copyright um, there. And the yeah, and done. I think look out as well, because the Learning Technology and Libraries group of the Bloomsbury Learning Consortium are putting together an event as well, which I think will be open to other guests if they want to come. Yeah. But everything will go up hopefully yeah. next week on our blog post about that. And then we've got the TBC for the Intellectual Property Advice for Art Students. Actually, it's going to be March. I think we've got a date, haven't we? So I thought it's the 4th of March. Is so it? we need to get yeah. that out. We will let you we'll know. Put, we'll update the schedule later. And that's going to be yeah. Roxanne Peters from University of Arts London, who is incredible. Yes. So that's going to be great. We're really looking forward to that. Um, we're waiting for the Intellectual Property Office to tell us, come back to us on their, their framework. Yeah. And, you know, we, we've got... Always, yeah, looking for uh, updates and things. Or so. topics that you want us to cover, things that we should revisit from, from whatever, just let us know. We are set to carry on doing these until the end of time itself, it would seem, or as long as everybody keeps turning up. Um, okay. Right, okay, let's move on to the final, one final last thing. Um, you, you talk to us about this. It's a parody. It's okay. a parody. I just, uh, you know, I always try to find something that's amusing and that's uh, uh, a bit kind of politics. Of, bit of politics. A bit of politics. Yeah. Has anyone? Has Where's anyone... the cheese and wine? <laughs> <laughs> this is not a party, what? Chris. This is not. A, I know you're having a good time. Is it? Oh, actually, yeah. No, this is not. Well, well, we are going to go for what lunch. What about the cake? Yeah. <laughs> Um, has anyone seen, um, this was doing the rounds, it's been in the Guardian, I'm sure you've all seen the uh, line of duty um, uh, interview, at AC10 interview in Boris Johnson, um, and if you haven't, then um, it's, it's, yes, it's, it's very amusing. Uh, John still hasn't figured out how they've done it. Um, they've sort of, they have, they have sort of spliced him into it in various shots, haven't they? But it is, it's clever, it's re it is really clever. 
um, and uh, yeah, of course, it's it's covered by a copyright exception what they've done because yes. they didn't get permission. And then I think the the producer Jed Mercurio came back and said he was he liked it and he added something to it as well. So, but yeah, parody is an amazing exception. Parody, caricature, and pastiche. Maybe we'll do yeah. a whole dedicated session on parody, caricature, and pastiche and yeah. its association with learning. Because I mean that came up, didn't it? Um, yeah. Shall yeah. I? I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing now. Yeah. Uh, shall we perhaps? We're gonna uh, stop, we the stop the recording. Stop the recording. Yeah. Uh, so if you if, can you do that, I can do that. If you, you like. could do that. Yeah.